The commission is made up of volunteers with expertise or interest in historic preservation and design. We generally meet on the second Thursday of the month to review cases. Staff to the commission are our urban design and historic preservation staff. They are available to answer questions if you have them, but please do not interrupt proceedings if you do indeed need to speak with one of them. The meeting generally proceeds with the staff calling the case and describing it. I will call for the applicant to come forward afterward to add to the basic description of the request if necessary, or if the applicant wishes to do so. <clears throat> if so, the applicant should keep the presentation to 10 minutes or less. The commissioners will then have the opportunity to ask questions. At this point, I will ask if there is anyone in the audience who wishes to speak for or against the proposal. Audience comments shall be kept to two minutes per person. If there is, the applicant will have an opportunity to respond. This rebuttal shall not exceed five minutes. In most of the cases, we will make a decision tonight after all information has been presented. If your case is denied, or if you feel that our decision was made in error, uh, you and anyone withstanding have the opportunity to appeal it within 30 days of the decision. If you plan to speak about a specific project, you must have signed in, and the sheet is at the back of the room. Also, and so that members of the public understand, commissioners are under strict instructions to avoid discussing DDRC meetings and applications with members of the public or with each other outside of these proceedings to avoid ex-party communications. If you wish to speak during the course of these proceedings, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth in these proceedings? And do we have a quorum? We do. Uh, will staff please read any changes to the agenda since publication? Since publication, we have had three deferrals. The first is 1328 Blanding Street, which was a request for exterior changes and preliminary certification for the Bailey Bill. This is an individual landmark. Uh, also, 415 Harden Street, which was a request for approval for site improvements, again, an individual landmark. And then 1006 Woodrow Street, a request for approval for new construction in Old Shandon Lower Waverly Protection Area B. Thank you. The DDRC utilizes a consent agenda for those projects which require DDRC review but which meet the guidelines and typically require no discussion. If anyone wishes to discuss an item on the consent agenda, I will ask that you speak up after the consent agenda is read and we can pull the item for discussion onto the regular agenda. Uh, staff, will you read the consent agenda? Well, our one case on it was deferred. Okay. We have the minutes. Pardon? Minutes. Mm -hmm. are still on consent agenda. Uh, I apologize, yes. We should have a uh, motion for March minutes, please. I was just about to do that. Is that what, okay. Okay, good idea. Uh, and, uh, yes, okay. I call for a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Are there any additions or deletions or changes to the minutes? I think I did that backwards, but uh, we already have a motion. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Presentation of cases on the regular agenda. If the staff will please introduce the first case. First case on the agenda is 1337 Assembly Street, and this is a request for a certificate of design approval for a rear addition to a building in the City Center Design Development District. Um, this application is for the addition of a raised porch on the rear of the building. The building, constructed in 1900, was originally the Columbia Electric Street Railway Light and Power Company substation and was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2011. While the attachment and modification to the existing structure is relatively minimal. The visibility of the addition as well as the removal of original detailing presents a concern from a precedent standpoint. This proposal originated as a staff level approval which is being appealed to the commission at this time. And you guys have been provided a brief history of the building which is from the South Carolina Department of Archives and History's website 
that has their National Register properties listed. And the sections of the guidelines that we're looking at are 5.9.1, preservation of traditional features and decoration, and 5.9.10, additions to existing structures. And the staff recommendation, staff recommended denial of this request, and it was found not to meet the guidelines in sections 5.9.1 and 5.9.10 of the City Center Design Development Guidelines. Typically, a rear addition with minimal physical impact to the original structure would be considered. However, the large scale of the addition on the highly visible back of this building, in addition to the detailed architectural features of this rear elevation, make this a unique case. The Commission may decide to grant an exception to the guidelines if they determine that the uniqueness of this request will not set a precedent for future proposals. So this is just, to, as a comment, it's just a little bit of an anomaly, because it, it is on the rear of the building, but the rear of the building is very visible but there really isn't a way to add to this building that's not visible from the public right away. So it was just sort of one of those ones that was outside of the normal rear deck addition. Okay, Josh Butcher is here from Lambert Architects to do a presentation or answer any questions. Before I get to that, uh, Ms. Great, um, kindly remind, I knew something was off. I forgot to ask for the uh, roll to be called. <laughs> Mr. Brim. Here. Mr. Cohn. Here. Mr. Daniel. Here. Ms. Fuller Wilt. Here. Ms. Great. Here. Mr. Savory. Here. We do indeed have quorum. All right. Well, thank you guys for letting us come and talk to you all this afternoon. Um, State your name, please, Josh. My name is uh, Josh Booker, and I'm an architect with Lambert Architects. Um, I don't have a, a whole lot to add to this. It's a pretty straightforward concept. Um, the owner's requesting to add a, a back patio onto this building um, that connects to the second floor. Um, our design intent was to uh, you know, use a, as minimal as possible um, structure and to keep it as uh, durable and lightweight as we could as well, um, keeping maintenance and everything in mind as well. Um, we. Worked with the city a couple times on, on just some various options as to how to connect that second floor. Um, the rear portion of the building is the least ornate facade. And uh, we looked at trying to add a doorway onto the side in the alleyway. And um, you know there, it's just uh, a much bigger uh, mess of um, detailing and such. Uh, so we've located it in the uh, recess panel. Um, we wanted to align that as much as we could. Uh, we also wanted to go with as much of an urban feel as we could as well, being that we're downtown and in the city, we didn't want to do something that had a residential feel to it. Um, certainly didn't want it to uh, be made out of wood and, and you know, look somewhat deteriorated over a few years. So, uh, you know, the concept is, uh, this is a, a place for the um, employees to, you know, work on a nice day outside or uh, enjoy a happy hour in the afternoon uh, while still maintaining as much of the activity in that uh, back parking area as they can um, since their uh, site's somewhat limited. Um, other than that, yeah, if you guys have any questions. Uh, any questions? Oh, there. In there's, are you going to be losing some parking as a result of this? Um, the in, intent is to try not to. I believe there might be one space that we end up losing. Um, obviously, parking's a premium down here, so that was one of the objectives and reasons for keeping things as thin and simple as we could. Yeah, we, we started with a smaller design, um, but be, because of what they needed for their uh, employees and you know how they saw themselves growing in the future, uh, this was kind of where we ended up. Um, you know, other, one other note is be, because of the size, we're required to have the two egress points off of that, one being the stair and then the, the doorway onto the second floor being our, uh, our second egress required, required egress opening. <clears throat> What's changed about the occupancy that's requiring a, a, a new means of egress? What's, what's changed? Um, we'll have over 50 people up there. Um, well, I mean, is, is it a different occupancy than it was before? 
Now, you have business on the inside. It'll be an assembly occupancy on the outside, um, which just puts us over our limit to having. I mean, you've had interior renovations that have changed the occupant load? Um, with the addition of this patio. Okay. And but, okay. Not following <laughs> but not inside the building? No. You not, haven't, not had, you haven't had to add a, an additional means of egress because of something that you've done inside the building? Um, we're revising the first floor, but nothing on the second floor, just this patio. Okay, but you haven't increased the occupant load except for the patio itself. Okay. Yeah. I just, uh, all yeah, right. Sorry. Correct. Yeah. Uh, before we go further, do we have anybody in support or opposition that would like to speak? Uh, if you'd like to speak, you can come to the microphone. State your name. Have you have you sworn in? You promise to tell the truth. Do you know anything about Mr. Daniel? Do you know anything about that building? Could you state your name, please? Oh, sorry. Bob Cooper. Mr. Turnipseed? I see. Well, we've tried to um, really make this building look phenomenal on the inside from what it used to look like. I run a software company. I've got two of the other founders here. We've, um, we've grown from five to about 40. And really, our whole goal with this, we bought this so we could have a place to just make it the best place to write software in, in, in South Carolina. The kids that we compete, you know, they got, they got chance to go to Apple, Google. It's usually the companies that we're competing with for the kids we hire. Excuse me. We ran up here. I didn't realize it was so far away. Um, and so, you know, we looked at the lofts in San Francisco, looked at when, when those kids go visit those high-tech companies, you know, what do they need? Uh, what do they, why would they want to stay in Columbia? So if you walk in this building, what we've, what we've been able to renovate so far, we bought, you know, we, we brought in old antique flooring, tore up the old cheap carpet, opened it up. It looks gorgeous on the second floor. The goal is to add this deck so the programmers can go out and relax and then to renovate the first floor to make it look just beautiful. We've looked for a lot of the old pictures of the original building and tried to figure out because there's so many cutouts on the on the aisle side, you know, how this thing was configured, but uh, it means a lot to us. So we're definitely trying to <coughs> trying to make it look great for Columbia. I have Thanks. a question. Uh, are you going to, there's security light on the rear of the building now, right? Say that one more time. Security light. Yeah. How are you going to cope with that, this addition? You know, I don't know. Um, there wasn't a security light there when we moved in. Um, so we had a lot of homeless folks sleeping. Um, and, and there was a, a fear when people would go out at night because there were people all around that people were nervous getting to their cars. So... Um, I hadn't talked to the architects about where we relo relocate the lights. Some of them are in the alleyway, which would stay where they're at. Um, and I think there's on that back side, there's just the one, the one light up on the top. The other two are kind of the doorway areas. Are you going to have lights for this structure, uh, say underneath the um, terrace? You're going to have lights below? I'll have to defer, to, defer to these. These guys would know that better than I would. We will have all the uh, required egress and security lighting um, integrated below the patio and, and above. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the commissioners? Did, did y'all um, work to explore other options on where this was placed, like on the roof or? No, the only thing we really talked about w when they first came to the table was trying to penetrate the building on the alley side instead of on the rear, and that just wasn't feasible and ended up being, I mean, there's 
I guess because of the elevation of the floor and where they're actually going to have to do a lot more um, actually modification to the window on the side of the building. Mm -hmm. So that was really the only thing that we talked about in, in modifying um, this design. I'm not sure if it's feasible over the roof deck or anything. We'll have to answer that, I guess. Other comments? I have one other for the architect. Um, even though this is schematic rendering, and I know it's not working drawings, but what about the wind bracing for this structure? How is that going to be handled? Are you going to have X bracing of wires or row of metal or what? Uh, these are all moment frame connections, which uh, our structural engineer has assured us is uh, stable. And moment connections? Stand. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and if you, uh, you know, if you want to flip back to the uh, alleyway, you'll see it. Um, it's essentially a, a similar design to the Washington, New St Washington Street view. Um, so the, the issue with adding a door on that side is the, the floor height is just above where that uh, cross piece comes across. And our door height was actually up and into those um, archways, which we felt was more intrusive than the uh, you know, square recesses on the rear back here. And I think the city agreed with us on that. I, I do want to just say a couple things. Um, obviously, I've read the, uh, the comments from the staff um, in regard to the potential precedent and to the compatibility with the existing structure. Um, and I, I did struggle with this a little because certainly it would be within uh, the owner's purview to build an addition on to the back of this building. Um, this is open air, uh, so it makes it a little trickier. But I, my own feeling about this is that I do think that the uh, historic nature of the building, the fact that it is a National Register structure, um, and the fact that the, uh, the location of this deck is, is very, very highly prominent on the street um, makes for very specific circumstances for this project. Uh, and I think that the argument, um, and, and to, to quote from the uh, comments the, um, with regard to preservation of traditional features, that sensitive responses uh, to existing materials, details and proportions, as well as patterns of materials, patterns of materials and openings is strongly recommended. Um, I, I think where I personally fall on this is that I think that the idea of being able to provide the kind of amenity that this provides is, is a wonderful, potentially wonderful idea. Um, I think that the, the issue or the aspect of something that is compatible in terms of texture and rhythm and materiality, um, and specific, you know, particularly in terms of material, materiality and rhythm, um, I think is, is a very important consideration uh, because the idea of, of allowing a deck uh, in the back is because a deck in the back is, as it says here, uh, should occur in areas that are not visible in the street. The problem is you don't have an area that's not visible from the street. I, I, I think that there is a solution uh, to this that would be uh, in terms of compatibility with the, the historically, it's a historically important building. It's a beautiful building that would be combat, compatible with the building, I think, there's probably a more compati compatible solution out there. Um, I, this is a sort of an interesting industrial structure in and of itself, I think, but I, it's sort of ad hoc. Um, and it's not, even though you can see through it, it's not transparent. It's got a fair amount of mass and, and um, visual presence that to me doesn't really take into account um, the existing historic structure. So I've got real reservations about it. Um, from the standpoint of precedent, uh, and, and I, I do think that there would be a way to reconfigure this in a, in a, it would take more time, but to reconfigure this in a way that would be historically, or to, to compatible with historical nature and rhythms of the building. So I don't know how other commissioners feel about that. I haven't heard anybody else um, 
uh, voice any concerns about that, but I, I do have those concerns. And it's very quiet. <laughs> I, if, uh, there any, if, I don't know if you have any response to that or if any commissioners have any other comments. Um, well, I think, um, you know, obviously, like I said, our, our uh, parameters, we're trying to keep as, as thin and light a structure as possible, obviously being heavy and steel. Um, it's hard to do at the size that it is. Um, but trying to maintain the, the urban feel and, you know, the uh, utilitarian side of this building, I suppose, um, really the direction that we were aiming for. Uh, Scott has something to add to that. Yeah, Scott Lambert, Lambert Architecture. One other thing, Tom, I think that's a little bit complicated is you can see we're actually connecting to the second floor here. So some of the studies we had was moving the stair on the back side um, to where it would be maybe a little bit less, less visible, but it actually adds more mass to it. So it was you know a challenge on it being able to connect back to the second floor versus dropping you all the way down and then we'd have another access and you can see also there's an right. access to the basement here as well so it's from a egress standpoint it's a little bit tricky with all the different levels we're trying to connect and still gain access to that basement um, so just to give you a little insight on no, I, I can appreciate that where it is Let's could you uh, get to the microphone and state your name again so we have it on the record sure sorry thanks the, the that I beam is carried out throughout the inside of the building. So if you walk in that building, there's big I-beams today inside and then a huge one that runs front to back. So it is the same style of steel. Um, you know, the railings are different, but the rest of it matches what's inside the building. So I thought, from my perspective, you know, I liked you know, the fact that that didn't match what was in the building. I guess if you're talking about trying to hide the mass, and it seems like if you, if you start covering things, then you bring the issue back that you're trying to avoid is with some of the population at nights, you need it open for security purposes, I would think, too. I don't know whether Tom is looking at it from that standpoint, but... Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that it would be more massive or that it couldn't be steel necessarily. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to sort of lead the design in any direction. I'm, my only observation is that I think that there would be, um, I think that Scott alluded to the idea of trying to consider different kind of configurations for the stair. And that's one of the, one of the aspects of it that I'm not sure that that's the proper location just from a from a massing standpoint, um, from the standpoint of how it relates to the street, that to have the stair right there in the corner um, seems uh, not in keeping with the texture and rhythm of the existing historic building. So I'm, just, I'm not saying at all that I'm opposed to the idea of an open air structure. I, I could imagine a lot of different kinds of open air pavilions back there that would seem uh, more compatible in terms of rhythm and rhythm and texture with the uh, existing building. And I, I, I may be the only one among us who feels this way. So I just thought that um, it was important to state those concerns that I had. Are there any other comments from commissioners? Anybody want to make a motion? And the, uh, I guess the unique site plan um, that the commission grant approval for the addition at 1337 Assembly Street. Is there a second? I'll second. Have a vote? Mr. Broom? Yes. Mr. Cohn? No. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Ms. Fuller-Wilt? Yes. Ms. Great? Yes. Mr. Savory? No. Motion passes. All righty. Next case, please.
Mr. Chairman, before she starts, uh, I have recused myself in this case as I have an ongoing relationship with the applicant on some pending legal uh, real estate matters. Thank you. <clears throat> This is 214 Wayne Street. This is a request for a certificate of design approval for exterior changes in addition, and a request for preliminary certification for the Bailey, Be Bailey Bill in Whaley Street Protection Area. Uh, this is a one-story brick pool building built circa 1918, which is at the rear of the Pacific Community Association building, which is known as 701 Whaley today. Uh, this was a space for swimming lessons and recreation for the Associated Mill community. Here's some historic photos that show the interior of the pool, um, as well as some large skylights that were originally part of the design. Um, this is today. The roof and skylights are gone, as well as most of the, uh, or all of the windows. Um, however, the tile work on the interior is still very well intact. So part of the um, scope of work would include restoring the missing features, such as the roof and skylights, and repairing the features that are still there. Uh, the renovation also includes the addition of approximately 845 square feet to the north side of the building for a lobby and catering space, as well as hardscaping along the west side of the building for a new courtyard and entry patio. The new entry patio also includes a ramp for ADA access. Overall, staff has found that the proposal meets the guidelines for the Bailey Bill and for the Whaley Street Protection Area, with the exceptions being the placement of the ramp and details of the courtyard. First, the proposal for the large brick courtyard area directly in front of the historic building has the courtyard abutting the brick of the building. Staff suggests creating a small visual buffer, either with a change in material or with a small planting area to break up this brick and visually differentiate the old from the new to be in keeping with the Bailey Bill ordinance. Second, due to the grade change on the lot and the high floor height of the, uh, where the pool is located, the entry also includes a brick patio, staircase, and ramp to lead guests from the street into the building. Several schemes have been explored by the applicant for the placement of the ramp, with great consideration being given to its placement away from the historic building, which staff agrees with. However, there are still some current concerns with the current proposed scheme, which places the ramp and guardrails directly in front of the lobby area, which uh, creates a circuitous, circuitous route into the building uh, with the ramp and railing obscuring the sense of entry as seen from the street. Staff suggests moving the staircase directly in front of the entry doors to create a direct line of entry to the building with the ramp most likely being moved to the north. Um, staff is happy to continue working with the applicant to work out the details of the ramp location. These are just some perspectives that show um, the sense of entry being obscured slightly with the ramp there. This is a, another scheme that they considered that includes some planting in front of the ramp. And this is very rough idea of a staff suggestion that includes the ramp being turned and moved to the north with the stair directly in front of the doorway. So staff recommendations are in two parts. Staff finds that the project complies with section 17-698 of the city ordinance and recommends granting preliminary certification for the Bailey Bill with the following conditions. The project meeting or exceeding the 20% investment threshold requirements for qualified rehabilitation expenses. All work meeting the standards for work as outlined in section 17-698. That a small visual buffer zone be added between the brick courtyard and historic building. And that all other details be deferred to staff. Second part of the staff recommendations. Staff finds that the proposal for exterior changes and addition to 214 Wayne Street is generally in keeping with sections 5 and 6 of the guidelines in section 17-698 of the city ordinance and recommends granting a certificate of design approval with the following conditions. That the entry stairs move directly in front of the entrance and the location of the ramp be adjusted so that it does not interfere with sense of entry, with final configuration being deferred to staff. A small visual buffer zone be added between the brick courtyard and historic building, and that all other details be deferred to staff. Very good. The applicant wish to speak? You were sworn in, right? Never missed an opportunity to speak. State your uh, name, please. Richard Burks. Thank you. Good to see everybody. 
uh, phase two of, I guess, three pieces to this project. A uh, long time coming. Um, I think staff has had, got some good recommendations. We'd like to see some working together on, on uh, you know, the, we're trying to get 72 feet of ramp to get up to the pool elevation. It's, it's not an easy fit. And we've got 70, 72 feet to work with. Um, I would be happy, if y'all have any questions, I'd be happy to actually mark Cotterill on the, this portion and, um, uh, and Scott or Josh or Wendy on the, uh, on the facade. So I'll leave it there. Thanks. Anybody uh, that would like to speak in support or opposition? Two minutes. Okay. Uh, comments or questions from the commissioners? I have a question. Um, <coughs> realize that we have to, have to meet the ADA with the ZAG of the ramp. Have you considered the uh, electric left exterior type? Mark Cotterill, Grimble Cotterill, Landscape Architects. We did consider a lift, and I think uh, we had some discussions with the architect, and we don't think that's an egress. Of, you know, that would now not allow us to get people out and down fast enough. If that you ask about a lift, you would have. I guess that's an interesting question, but you have enough space for an area of refuge, I assume. An area of what? Area of refuge. That patio. I I hadn't thought of the question, but just to clarify that. Lambert, Lambert architecture, we can't get far enough away from the building um, to meet the code. In okay. Order, yes, if the building's on fire, we can't get you far enough, and we're, we'll be out into the street. So that, that was the challenge. So yes, sir, we did look into the, the lift idea, but if you had more than, well, it would have to be on some kind of emergency backup, but if you had more than one person in a wheelchair, you're jammed up. So that was, that's the issue. Okay, thank you. Okay, I might want to add, not the subject is, is good enough for me to understand. I do want to say thank you for making this improvement. I've been looking forward to seeing this. <laughs> Other comments from commissioners? Well, I, I, I would uh, uh, echo Mr. Broom's remarks. I, I think it's great that this is finally happening. I know I think you do too, Richard. <laughs> Um, I have a question that's not related to our purview at all, but only because I've been hearing about this for years and then I read about it in here too, the glass, the glass floor over the pool. That's clear glass, just out of curiosity. Uh -huh. Very cool. So the other question I have, and it sounds like maybe we'll make this uh, relatively quick if I understood what you were saying, is that you're willing to uh, work with staff on all of these recommendations? Yes, I mean, it, In other will, words, let me ask you the question this way. <laughs> if, if, if a motion is made with all of these caveats, you're, you're fine with that, you're comfortable with that? I, I, there, there are some things that I think that we need to, I don't wanna just say I'm willing to do it right out of hand, I think we, agreed that we'd sit down and try to, right. as we put it yesterday, put 14 ounces on a 12-ounce jar. Um, right. You know, one, one point, uh, I think we can figure out some stuff on the handicap ramp. I'm not a big fan of putting a planter against the side of the building. We don't have uh, the facade of 701 on Whaley and Wayne. The, the brick runs straight up to the, to the wall. Um, it was a shippo thing when we did that, uh, not putting any planters or plants. Uh, Scott wants to address that, he can. Um, I'm sorry, when you said it's a SHPO thing, what was their recommendation was to or to not do it? To not do it, to not put the planter in? Right, so, so SHPO doesn't want anything green up against Got it. the okay. building. They don't, and, wanna, they don't want it, they don't want it. I got you. Go ahead. Scott Lambert. Um, yeah, so basically with the nature of this building, much like the mills, um, there wasn't a lot of ornate landscape, right, right. right? So I think that the challenge is, is 
Richard's talked about putting just planters, but not planting beds, for example, okay. um, just to make it softer. And I think that's mm -hmm. part of what the intent of the city is. But if, if I'm if I'm correct, but I think the issue is if we go in and try to you know create a whole mm -hmm. landscaping, mm -hmm. it's it's really not consistent with what the original I got nature of the building was. So right. I, I just wanted a clarification. I thought that's what Richard meant. Right, and to clarify, we we did originally suggest a, a like a green strip to separate a little bit of the new patio from the building, mm -hmm. but understanding Shippo's viewpoint, not wanting to do that. Okay. What we were thinking is that having some sort of different um, paving material aside from the bricks, we don't have brick meeting brick, but just a visual other paving material there would help separate the old from the new just a little bit more. So you could put your planners on that. We wouldn't have a landscape buffer or anything. I'm willing to look at anything. I, I just feel like I'd like to, you know, I'm kind of an OCD guy anyway, so having the consistency as it, as it flows through, it's, it's, it's a plaza. Uh -huh. it's, um, I understand. So it's... Um, I, to me, the big, big, I mean, the big deal is getting that, I, I agree with staff's comments, getting that ramp out of it right in front of everybody's face as they walk up. I'm, I'm sure there's a way to do it. I'm sure... We have, I'd be able to figure uh, I, that out. I can't even tell, me, tell you how many days and plans, but as I told these guys when we met with them, uh, the more eyes on it, the better. You know, you get a better product from pounding it out. And, yeah. and I really believe that we've got a better, you know, just from what Mark worked on uh, and Rachel producing this morning, I think we're, I think we're very close. We just have very tight okay. tolerances. It, it's going to come down to where... You know, do we have a five-foot ramp, or do we have a four-foot, four-foot ramp, or, right. you know, to get all the hardware well, I, I think without getting into detail about that, I think that what I'm trying to get at is if um, yes. you're, you're comfortable working yeah. through that with staff, I oh, think yeah. we'll probably yeah. be comfortable making a motion. I just wanted to be, get clarification on that. Yeah, one other point, it's not visible in this rendering, is there's a whole other addition planned on this that was originally the fly. So when we submitted to the National Park Service and got approval on the part two originally, the next, there's a whole other piece to this, which was the um, fly on the back of the stage. So that's the reason it, it looks like, you know, visually you just move the ramp to the left-hand side of this image and you can just put it there, but that's actually part of where the future fly will go and access to it. So there's, a, there's another phase to this that's not really represented because that's not part of the project right now, just to clarify. Anything else? Thank you. Would anybody like to make a motion? I think we have two different motions, actually. Let's make a motion first. Anybody want to make a motion about the Bailey Bill? Grant approval for the grant certificate of design approval at 214 Wayne Street for the addition and preliminary certification for the Bailey Bill based upon the project complying with section 17698 of the city ordinance with the following recommendation that the project meets or exceeds the 20% investment threshold requirements for qualified rehabilitation expenses that all work meeting the standards for work as outlined in section 17-698 that a small buffer zone for low plants be added between the brick courtyard and historic building and all details be deferred to staff. Is there a second? we can amend we are in agreement that a plant buffer zone is not necessarily required here so I didn't want to make that a requirement if okay just amend the motion to allow us to continue working with them on some ideas for a, just a, some kind of visual buffer so do you want to amend that motion I'm in the motion for the applicant and staff to evaluate um, the buffer zone are plantings. I, I think we can eliminate that uh, qualification from the. Eliminate altogether. Eliminate. Yeah. Okay. Just a visual buffer zone. Okay. So I make an additional amendment um, that the um, reference to the buffer zones and plantings uh, be um, redacted. Or do you need me to read it? Okay. 
Um, that the project meets or exceeds the 20% investment threshold requirements for qualified rehabilitation expenses that all work meeting the standards for work as outlined in section 17-698 and all details be deferred to staff um, at 214 Wayne Street granting a certificate of design approval for exterior changes in addition for preliminary certification of the Bailey Bill. Is there a second? Good, we have a vote, please. Did we mention the ramp in the motion? Uh, is that, we're voting for just the Bailey Bill now, right? That's a second motion. Did you, I'm sorry, y'all. It sounded like they were both included in one motion there. Did um, you use the word and addition? Is that what you're talking about? She said um, preliminary certification of Bailey Bill and a certificate of design approval. Certification for Bailey Bill. Okay. Is that all that you were making the motion for was the Bailey Bill? Okay. Thank you. Just the Bailey Bill, just correct? Just the Bailey Bill. Okay. This is just for the Bailey Bill. Thank you. Okay. And we have a motion. A uh, second? We did. Mr. Broom? Yes. Mr. Cohn? Yes. Ms. Fuller-Wilt? Yes. Ms. Grape? Yes. Mr. Savory? Yes. All right. We have approval. And could we have a motion for the uh, certificate of design approval? Anybody? I'll try. I make a motion that we approve the application for exterior changes in addition to 214 Wayne Street, as it is generally in keeping with sections five and six of the guidelines in section 17. Dash 698 of the city ordinance uh, based on the following conditions that the entry stairs move directly in front of the entrance with the location of the ramp adjusted so that it does not interfere with the sense of entry. Is that? Okay. And with final configuration to be approved by staff and that all other details be deferred to staff. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Mr. Broom? Yes. Mr. Cohn? Yes. Ms. Fuller-Wilt? Yes. Ms. Great? Yes. Mr. Savory? Yes. Motion passes. Do we have any other business? Um, just to mention that the state conference and preservation will be coming up soon, so I'll send y'all out an email. We're happy to sponsor any members who would like to attend that, so that will be coming out shortly. All right. Motion to adjourn? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>